Hey y'all, we have us a little desk hutch, some type of lock like this. And uh, the first thing you always do is grab one of these National D88, uh, what is it, D8590 keys to see if it'll work. Sometimes they do, but this one is just a little short and you can see how much shorter it is. So when you put it in and you go to turn, you get kind of a springy action. Okay, it, it worked, but it's not working. Let's see how it's not pulling it back all the way. So that is not good. It would work, and this is kind of one of the biggest problems with these antique locks is people think, hey, it works, but it actually doesn't pull it all the way back. What happens when that happens is, number one, it could get stuck in like a halfway position and or it could mess up the spring in there depending on just you know how messed up or how wrong your key is so since uh, this is too short we're going to want to use a uh, bigger bladed key so i've already gone ahead and cut down just to save time i've gone ahead and cut down this is a 34b uh, another big thing another Kind of a bad thing you notice those holes are not exactly centered unfortunately that's kind of the deal that we have to work with nowadays uh, but if you can see the original 34b that has not been modified uh actually i have modified this one it's cut down just a bit there uh, but you can see just how much i have cut this one down and you do that simply by number one cutting the height down until it passes this lip right there once it goes in you would cut down until you can get the key to turn and uh, being very careful because we see that the bolt sometimes the bolts on the front and then sometimes the bolts on the back really is just block specific but you want to make sure when you have this in that it is just passing the inside and if you can see there it is just passing the inside both ways another thing you have to do is kind of touch up and i've already done all this again but after i cut it this way i want to went ahead and smooth it around here looking at the lock we see our lock is just the post is kind of i guess cattywampus is what you could call that or off center just a bit so if you leave burrs on the shank of the key in this general area, when you go to turn it, it'll be, it'll get bound up and it won't turn real smooth. So you do have to make sure that when you're doing this, that you get this part of the key and get it rounded off. Uh, now, once you get the key to pass the key hole, you will start to fill out to see if it needs cuts. Now, most of these locks are only one lever at most in the US anyway, you're gonna find them to be three lever. Uh, very rarely do you go over three lever in the US. Uh, but most of them again are one lever. Uh, so when you go and you turn it, and you can see how off center that post is. When you turn it, it's got a big gap on one side and it's really tight on the other. But when we go and we turn it, we feel, we feel it hard stop right there. There's no springing action to it. And when you have a hard stop, that means you're hitting the bolt. So on this particular key, again, the bolt's gonna be on this side of the key towards the head, and this side will be our levers. So what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna cut down, if we hold this up here, we're gonna to wanna to cut down the width of the bolt, which is pretty much half the key. This is so thin, we know it's pretty much one lever. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna cut down half the key to about your first cut. This could be any number of things. So at this point, you wanna take it really slow. Let me zoom in down here, actually. There we go. Come on, focus. Uh, so basically what we're going to want to do is we're going to cut just a little hunk out of the key, just like that. And uh, at some point it will go further. So if we turn the key now, we got to stop right there. And 
uh, you'll also get a springy action instead of this hard stop. So instead of it stopping here, it will continue on a little bit further. And then that tells us once we get to that point where the, uh, where the lever is. And the lever side may have to be cut down as well. Uh, but what we're gonna do here, uh, I don't have anything to really chuck this up in and I'm just gonna use this big, bigger file to do this. So we're just gonna start, start our cuts right here. And again, we wanna go about the width of that bolt. It does help to brace this in a vise, but we're not gonna do that. So we see that's about what we're doing right there. It is not quite big enough for that bolt, so we're gonna make it just a bit bigger. And I'm gonna do that with this side of the file. Push kind of pushing this way and down. All right, now once we get it started, I'm gonna switch over to this little little guy right here. It's much easier to deal with than that bigger one. And we're gonna start cutting it down. Hey, how are you? Where did we leave off? We had started filing down this. Let's just see where we're at because I had to help a couple of customers. Uh, but let's just see what we're doing here. See if we're getting any bypass. And we want to be careful that it's cut wide enough. I still don't think it's really cut wide enough right there. I think we need to go out just a bit more. So let's zoom back in down here. Um, am I in camera? I am in camera. Zoom. Uh, there we go. Let's go ahead and file it down just a bit more and see if we can get it to pass the bolt and give us some uh, some springy action here so we know we're hitting a lever. And again, about half the key. I'm still kind of pushing this way. This side of the file has teeth on it so I'm still kind of pushing towards the center of the blank until we get about halfway there which is right about there now I'm now stop pushing that way and just push straight down or you can flip it over because one side uh, depending on the file this file has both sides so I'm just going to push straight down now I could use a machine to do this we've got a slaughter machine but just for sake of DIY, you can do this with a file, obviously. All right, let's see what happens there. All right, and turning, turning, turning. Okay, I can feel just a little bit more. It's going just a bit further. In fact, you can hear it. So we know now that that is likely passing by. Uh, now you can do one or two things here. Sometimes I'll use a candle to make it look cool. We'll just use the candle. To make the video cool, we'll use the candle, All right? Smoke them if you got them. No, not you. Set it up. Let's see what we have. We'll go ahead and put a little bit of tension on this. We're close. We are definitely close. Let's look at the tip. And it looks like we're still hitting right there. We're starting to get a little mark. 
right on this where the levers would be, but we still have a little bit of a mark right there. So we need to take that down just a bit further. and start rounding it off these work always work a lot better if they're rounded instead of having this kind of square so I always kind of hit it just to give it a little rounded surface to go on now I do have these other keys out there and these could have been these are solid brass keys the customer didn't want these particular ones however uh, these are an option. There are several different designs. There's less cutting involved, and they really do kind of fit. They're better machined, even though they're more expensive. Again, solid brass versus metal. Um, but since they're more expensive, you do have just a bit better, a little more, more careful machining, I should say, as well as decorative heads. So we see, we see the difference in the quality or the accuracy right there you can see thinner wall on one side these are equal so that is one bonus to using one of these better keys however again you can use just these regular so now let's see we filed it down a little bit more okay now we're getting a springy action you can hear it right there and that clicking, this is where it comes in. You need to be a little bit careful when you're doing this because it can kind of booger up the spring again. You don't want to do that. So let's go ahead, sit it up one time, see what happens. Oh, there we go. Hey, look, the sit made it work, y'all. The sit made it work. Yeah, let's take a look. Uh, it looks like we could go down just a bit like all it and, and we do see a little lip right there so that that would naturally get taken off anyway but we can see how it's kind of kind of marking it right there and that tells me that's where the lever is hitting so if we take it down a little bit we need to be very careful at this point because you don't want to go too far but i'm going to go ahead and do like i said a second ago i'm going to go ahead and do the the finish up here and her <laughs> here and uh, do the rounding off of it. So I'm gonna flat, flat. Get it flat. Get that flat. And go ahead and round the edges just a bit. And we should have us a decent little key here. stiff so I'm gonna smoke it one more time see where our problem is shouldn't take but just a little bit of filing to get to get this working right we're almost there y'all so it's a little catchy right there that means likely that we're still hitting the bolt pull our key out and see what's going on looks like we're still needing to go down in both places so just a little bit more on the filing straight down so let's go ahead and take down that slow and steady is the key here because if you go too far your key will not work correctly
And you can't make a recovery if you go too far. Again, we're going to round that down. Just a bit because we may still be a little high. A little bit. Let's check. We want it to turn smoothly without that, without that catch. We want to make sure it extends all the way. No more catching. Uh, we can just kind of hit this one time. We just want to see if we're getting any marks, even though it feels smooth. Just want to make sure that everything's good. Looks like that can come down just a hair on the lever side. Because if it's too high, it will uh, cause problems with the spring. Finish it up with our chamfered edges. And clean it off. Second look. Not bad. Let's do the edges just to give it a more of a finished appearance. These are milled blanks, so there's always a little bit of rough area on it. And then make sure the tip is fat. There we go, all finished. Oh, out of focus, out of focus and all finished. smoke it one more time just double check and that is pretty much a typical mark that you're gonna get just because that's where the lever presses down on however it won't hurt Take this down just a bit more. Should be working well. No catching. No hard fill. It's really hard to turn. That is likely due to your levers being up too high. And we're not really getting any more marks there on the tip. Could square this up just bit right there there we go and that's it a simple one lever key make very typical of what you'll find in cabinets and dressers things like that all right thanks for watching if you have any questions or comments 
As always, leave them in the comments section.